Hey folks, in this episode I'm going to show you how to make this seamless animation loop in Blender. I think this paper cut style is pretty cool, it's easy to make, and you should be able to use any 3D object to cut into these paper layers. So without further ado, let's get to it. So for this one, we're going to be using EV Render Engine. If you use Cycles, you'll probably get better results, but just for this tutorial, I'm going to use EV. So the first thing I'll do, I'm going to take the default cube, I'm going to hit Delete, I'll then hit Shift A, I'm going to go Mesh, and I'm going to choose Icosphere. I'll keep the default settings, I'll then right click and I'll click Shade Smooth. I'll then navigate to the Modifier tab over here, I'm going to click Add Modifier, I'm going to go to Deform and I'm going to choose Displace. I'll then click New, I'll then click this button here to go to my texture slot. I'm going to change it from Image or Movie to Clouds and for the cloud size I'm going to type in 1. I'll navigate back over to my Modifier tab over here. I'm going to change the coordinate system from Local to Object. I'll then add that object in the scene, so I'll hit Shift A, and I'm going to go to Empty, and I'm going to choose Sphere. So with the Empty Sphere selected, I'm going to hit S2, Enter, and that will scale it up by 2. I'll then reselect the Icosphere, and for the object coordinates, I'm going to change the object to Empty. Maybe I can rename the Empty in my Outliner to something a bit more representative. So I'm going to double click the Empty, and I'm going to type in Empty Displacement Controller, and if I reselect the Icosphere, that should be reflected in here. I'll keep the strength set to 1. I'll now collapse the displacement modifier. I'm going to click add modifier. I'm going to go to generate and I'm going to choose subdivision surface. I'm going to set this to level 2 for the viewport and for render. I'll then collapse that modifier. I'll then click add modifier. I'm going to go to deform and I'm going to choose displacement. I'll then click new. I'm going to click this button over here to open up the texture slot. I'll change the size of this cloud texture to 0.5. I'll then go to my modifier tab over here. I'm going to change the coordinates from local to object and that object was the empty displacement controller. For the strength I'm going to type in 0.5. So again I'm going to collapse this last displacement modifier. I'm going to click add modifier. We'll go to generate and I'm going to choose subdivision surface. I'm going to set this to level 1 for viewport and for render. I'll collapse that modifier. I'll then click add modifier. We go to deform and we'll choose displace. I'll then click new. I'll click this button here to go to the texture slot and for the texture size I'm going to type in 0.25. I'll then go over to my modifier tab over here. I'll change the strength to 0.25. I'll change the coordinate system from local to object and that object would be the empty displacement controller. So now if I grab the empty displacement controller and hit G you can see that all the textures are mapped to this object here. Open up your timeline. If you don't know how to do that, just take your cursor to the left hand corner of your 3D viewport until you see a crosshair, left click and drag up and then click this button here and then click timeline. I've already got one open, so I'm just gonna collapse that window. So on your timeline, change your end frame to 480 frames. I'll just hit N to hide the end panel. So skip back to frame one, ensure that you've got your empty object selected. And for the X rotation, I'm gonna add a keyframe on zero degrees. I'll then skip to the last frame. I'm going to skip forward one more frame, so we're on frame 481. And for the X rotation, I'm going to type in negative 360 degrees. I'll then add a keyframe there. I'll then take my cursor over to my timeline. I'll hit A a couple of times to make sure that all my keyframes are selected. I'll then hit T, and then I'll change the animation interpolation type to linear. And that will ensure that this rotates at a constant speed. Okay, with my Icosphere object selected, I'm going to navigate to my Outliner over here. I'm going to double click the Icosphere and I'll rename it to Cutter. And in your Outliner, with this icon here, I'm going to enable this and I'm going to enable all the filters here. And then that should be reflected in your Outliner here. On the Cutter object, I'm going to click the eye to mute it from the viewport. I'll then hit Shift A. I'm going to go Mesh and I'll add a plane. I'll hit Numpad 1 to go into Front View. I'll then enable Wireframe View. I'll zoom into that plane. Tap into edit mode, ensure that you've got all your vertices selected, hit shift D, Z and then hold down control to snap it to the grid and just bring it up one increment, tap out of edit mode. So now we've got two planes, excellent. I'll just hit numpad 1 to go into front view, I'll then go to my modifier tab over here, I'm going to click add modifier, we'll go to generate and we'll choose array. For the X factor I'm going to type in 0 and for the Z factor I'm going to type in 1. I'll increase the count to let's say 20. I now tab into edit mode, I'm going to select all the vertices, I'm going to hit S, Shift Z and that will scale on every axis excluding the Z axis too. I then hit enter and finally tab out of edit mode. That's all the modelling we have to do, excellent. And now I'm going to hit G, Z, hold down control to snap it to the grid and I'm going to bring this down on the Z axis until the top plane is in line with the world origin which is here on this X axis. 
So the idea behind this is we're going to use this cutter object to cut into the planes and expose all the layers. Unfortunately, we can't really use the Boolean modifier that comes shipped with Blender because it glitches out. So we're going to make one in geometry nodes. It's really simple. Let's do that now. So go to your timeline, just increase this window here, change it from your timeline to your geometry node editor. We're going to click new and we'll call this Boolean GN. I'm going to zoom into my nodes over here. I'll hit Shift A and I'm going to search for Mesh Boolean. And I'll pop that in between there. I'll then go to my outliner up here. And I'm going to drag this cutter object into the node tree. I'll just mute the cutter in my outliner. I'll change the object info node from original to relative. And I'll drag the geometry socket into the mesh 2 socket of the mesh boolean. And we'll enable self intersection. I'll then change the geometry node editor back to my timeline. And I'll decrease this window. I'll go to my outliner. Re-enable the cutter object. And now we just need to scale this object so the cutter object will fit inside. So I'm going to take this object, I'm going to hit G, C, hold down control, to snap it to the grid, to maybe something around about there. I'll then hit S, Z, hold down control to snap it in increments, and I'm going to bring it to this halfway point here. I'll then hit control A, and I'm going to apply the scale. Now what we need to ensure is that this won't intersect this bottom face down here. So I'm just going to scrub my cursor and find the lowest point, there you go, it's intersecting there. So I'm going to take this object, I'll hit G, Z, hold down control to snap it to the grid. I'll take it to around about there. I'll reselect this object here. I'm just going to scrub my timeline, make sure it doesn't go any lower. Okay, it's intersecting there. So I'll take this object, I'll hit G, Z, hold down control to snap it to the grid, and I'll place it there. I'll then reselect this object, and I'll scrub a bit more. Okay, it looks like we're in the safe zone. So now I'll take this object here, I'm going to hit S, Z, hold down control, snap it to the grid, and I'm going to take it up to round about there. It doesn't have to be exact, but try and avoid going above this halfway mark if you can. I'll then hit control A, and I'm going to apply the scale. Now we can go to our outliner, and we can hide the cutter object from viewport and from render. We can now go into solid view. We won't see anything happening, because we need to apply the array modifier. So navigate over to your modifier stack over here. Click this arrow button and click apply. Although you may not be able to see it, it is actually working. So go to your shader options up here, click this arrow button and then enable cavity and shadow. And there you go, you can see what's happening. In fact, we can go to viewport shading here and you can see it a lot better. Excellent. Before we move on to the materials, I'm just going to set the camera up. So I'm going to hit numpad 7 to go into top view. I'll then hit numpad period to align the camera to the selected object. I'll then hit control out numpad 0 and that will align the camera to the view. I'll then select my camera. I'll go to my object data tab over here and ensure that your X and Y location are set to 0 and that your X, Y and Z rotation is also set to 0. I'm going to go to my camera data down here. I'm going to change it from 50mm to 70mm. I'll then navigate back to my object data over here and I'm just going to drag it on the z-axis until everything is in view. Maybe I'll take it down to let's say 5 meters. I'll navigate to my outliner. I'm going to select the default light. I'll hit delete. I'll navigate to my well tab down here and for the strength I'm going to set this to zero. Before we move on it's a good idea to save your project. So I'm going to click file, save as and I'm going to save my project as like and subscribe. Thanks folks, you absolute legends, and then click save as. To ensure that your cursor is in the centre of the world, click shift C. I'll then hit numpad 0 to go into camera view. I'll navigate to rendered view up here. I'll then hit shift A. I'm going to search for light and we'll choose sun. I'll navigate to my light data tab over here. I'm going to set the strength to let's say 5 and I'm going to change the angle to 180. And that will give us softer shadows. I'll then navigate to my render tab over here. I'm just going to ensure that I've got shadows enabled and I've got ray tracing enabled. Now we can move on with the materials. So I'll take my cursor to the bottom left until I see the crosshair. I'll left click and drag up and that will open a new window. I'll then change this from the 3D viewport to the shader editor. I'll then select the plane object. I'll go to my shader editor and click new. I'll just zoom in. I'll hit N to hide the end panel. I'll set the roughness to 1. I'll then hit shift A. I'm going to go to input and we'll choose texture coordinate. Shift A. I'm going to go to Converter, and we choose Separate XYZ. Shift A, I'm going to go Converter, and I'm going to choose Color Ramp. I'll plug the object socket from the texture coordinate into the vector of the Separate XYZ. I'll then plug the Z value from the Separate XYZ into the factor of the Color Ramp. I'll then plug the color from the Color Ramp into the base color of the principal BSDF. On the Color Ramp, I'll click this plus button five times, and that will add five flags. I'll then drag the flags across to improve the spacing. Just roughen it up for now. 
So for this first flag, I'm going to set this to red. So I'm going to actually go to RGB and then I can take the green and blue all the way down. For this next flag, I'm going to set this to yellow. So that's 100% red, 100% green. For this next flag, I'm going to set this to green. For this next flag, I'm going to set this to like an aqua color. For this next flag, I'm going to set this to blue. For this flag, I'll set to purple. And this last flag, I'm going to set to a pink color. To dial in these colors more efficiently, we're going to have to go to wireframe view. I'm going to hit numpad one to go into front view. Let's just make this view a bit bigger. Navigate to your outliner and re-enable the cutter for the viewport. Select your cutter object. We'll scrub the timeline until the cutter object reaches the lowest point in deformation. So that was, for me, it was around there. Yours might be different. I'll then navigate back to my outliner and I'm going to hide the cutter object from viewport and render. I'll then hit numpad zero. Let's go into camera view. I'm going to go to rendered view. I'll then reselect the plane layer object. I'll increase the shader editor. So the idea here is I want a smooth gradient between the bottom and the top. So I'm just going to drag this red flag until only the bottom piece is red. Maybe the next piece up. And I'll just shimmy some of these flags about until we've got a nice gradient. Okay, I'd be happy with that. I'll then hit Control S to save the project. I'll hit F12 and render out a test frame. The edges look a bit jagged, so I'm going to add another subdivision surface to the cutter object. So I'm going to hit Escape. I'm going to navigate to my outliner over here. I'll re-enable the cutter object. I'm going to select that cutter object. And in your modifier tab over here, click Add Modifier, go to Generate, and we'll choose Subdivision Surface. I'm going to set the viewport levels to 2 and the render to two. I'll then navigate back to the outliner and I'm gonna hide the cutter object from viewport and from render. I'll then select the plane object. I'm gonna hit F12 for one more test frame. Okay, that's looking a lot smoother, excellent. I'll hit escape. So the cutter object doesn't necessarily have to be this object here, it can be any object. All you have to do is, let me just mute that, change this to geometry nodes editor. All you have to do is select this layer plane object and then simply add it into your scene in the collection and then just change the cutter object from whatever it is in your scene. I'll just change this back to the shader editor. I'll increase this window. I'll navigate to my output tab over here. Scroll down until you see output and then choose the file location of where you want to save your image sequence. I've got mine in a file location called You Absolute Legends and then click accept. Select a file format of your choice. Usually I'd go with OpenEXR but for this I'm just going to choose an image sequence of PNG. Scroll up to the top, go back to your render settings, hit Control S to save your project and then it's simply a case of hitting Control F12 and that will render out your image sequence. Join me on Patreon as a free member to get access to this file alongside other Blender files from previous tutorials. That's the tutorial in a nutshell. I hope you found this useful. If you did, please click like and subscribe. It really helps my channel. Have a great day, level up and thanks for watching.